I'm back today with something that's worked Lena's Torvalds up during the latest merge window for 6.17, and Lena's going as far as calling some of the code garbage. We're gonna be reading through an exchange from Linus and Palmer here, who recently submitted the first batch of RISC-V architecture updates for the Linux 6.17 merge window. This all started here with Palmer asking Linus to pull changes from the RISC-V Linux.git tree into the mainline kernel. And the main goals here of this pull request is to bring a large set of new features, fixes, and cleanups for the RISC-V architecture, plus related ACPI, IO, MMU driver, and tooling changes. These patches would update both kernel and user space for newer RISC-V extensions and platform capabilities, which are all exciting, but Linus did not seem to think so. As things broke down pretty quick, let's check out what exactly transpired here. So this is actually part one of a multi-part series of risk five patches for the 6.17 merge window that were going to be submitted. And for those of you unaware, risk five is an open source instruction set architecture, also known as an ISA, which are the set of machine level instructions that CPUs follow. It's similar to what you would see in x86 Intel AMD architecture or ARM, but has some important differences. And the main one is it's open and free. Unlike x86 or ARM, anyone can use RISC-V without paying for licensing fees like they would with ARM or getting permission. And this is great as the instruction set here under RISC-V is published under a permissive license. So universities, companies, hobbyists, anyone can use and build CPUs that implement the instruction set. And RISC actually stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. And the idea is to use a small, clean, and consistent set of instructions that are easy for hardware to execute efficiently. And over the last few years, there's definitely a growing ecosystem trying to use RISC, at least in embedded devices, some small commercial CPUs, and bigger companies trying to invest in IoT to accelerate AI. Anyways, Linux has full support for RISC-V and is continuously adding new features, which is exactly the pull request that we're seeing here. So it does come as a surprise that this new pull request was called garbage. But now that we understand what RISC-V is, let's talk about what was actually getting implemented here. Support for RISC-V IOMMU in ACPI based systems. This just lets RISC-V systems use ACPI to manage device memory and access it more securely. Support for ACPI BGRT table to show vendor logos. And just, this is for letting the boot process show the manufacturer's logo. And errata work around for a store buffer merging issue that manifests on some T systems, AKA a workaround for a hardware quirk that shows up in these T head chips and could cause memory errors. The MMU type can now be read for device tree. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Support for XMIPS executable control extension, which adds support for MIPS style CPU pause instruction, performance improvements and NDNS swap routines on systems with ZBB which can help improve the speed of, of byte swapping and RAID 6 operations on CPUs with certain hardware features. We have support for K-Probe Trace, CFI, and a few extra extensions. So all great things to be added here. And we get this message. This is very late, so I don't plan on having a part two unless something goes off the rails. There's a few trivial merge conflicts with the SBI drivers, just having multiple drivers in flight, maybe, it'd be better to have these drivers in other trees. But the SBI stuff is pretty tied to RISC-V and they seem stuck. Aside from that, things look clean on my end. Well, that was all good and until we got a response from Linus. And that's when things started unfolding here for this particular pull request. We get quite a harsh reply from Linus under this submission. So let's go check that out. But before we do, Take a moment and subscribe below. You wouldn't want to miss another Linux kernel mailing list back and forth like this. Also, smash that like button on the way back up. This is where things start getting called out by Linus. In response to the RISC-V patches for the 6.17 merge window part one series, as Palmer had said, there probably is going to be more. Let's read Linus's reply as he only highlighted the subject. Linus starts out by saying no. This is garbage and it came in too late. 
quite the star from Linus. I asked for early pull requests because I'm traveling, and if you can follow that rule, at least make the pull requests good. And what does Linus mean by good? This adds various garbage that isn't RISC-V specific to generic header files. And by garbage, I really mean it. This is stuff that nobody should ever send me, never mind late in the merge window. And then specifically calls out something like this crazy and pointless make U32 from 2U16 helper function or quote unquote helper, which by just reading this name clearly would take two unsigned 16-bit integers, I assume, and make it into one unsigned 32. So you're combining two 16-bit words into one 32-bit word. And why this is a big no-no is specific to generic header files means that this is shared code that can be used across all architectures, meaning it could affect all architectures. And this helper is not RISC-V specific. So including the RISC-V pull request looks like scope creep, sneaking unrelated changes via architecture specific merge, making it poor quality or as described here, garbage. Let's continue on. That thing makes the world actively a worse place to live. It's useless garbage, again, the word garbage, that makes any user incomprehensible and actively worse than not using the stupid helper. If you write the code out as A, shifted by 16 bits, plus B, you know what it does and which is the high word. Maybe you need to add a cast to make sure that B doesn't have high bits that populates the end result. So maybe it's not going to be exactly pretty, but it's not going to be wrong and incomprehensible either. In contrast, if you write make U32 from 2U16 and you accept two parameters here, you have not an effing clue what that word order is. And then IOW or in other words, you just made things worse and you added that helper to a generic non risk v file where people are apparently supposed to use it to make other code worse too. This is a clear explanation of what really set Linus off. As at least writing right here, A shifted by 16 and plus B makes it obvious that A is at least the high half of the overall 32 bits. So we can imagine that there's 16 bits here. This would be A, and then we would have B, which would be the lower half of bits to make up that 32 bits B. Using make U32 from the two U16 function with A and B being passed in hides that detail. You can't tell the byte order without looking up the function. That makes the code harder to read and easier to misunderstand. And then on top of it, this helper function was put into a generic header, which could spread this pattern into the rest of the kernel, not just the risk five architecture. Linus is really just trying to show Palmer how bad, and to quote Linus, garbage of code was submitted through the merge request and that it's absolutely not getting added in. A very strong and clear no from Linus on this merge request, but let's continue on as he has more to say. And one thing I want to say is if you want to level up your Linux experience today, check out my checklist, cheat sheet, and mind map, all with new flashcards at SavvyNick.com. Download those today and let's get back into it. So no, things like this need to get bent. Again, another harsh sentiment here from Linus. It does not go into generic header files and it damn well does not happen late in the merge window. You're on notice. No more late pull requests and no more garbage outside the RISC-V tree. Now I would hope there's no garbage inside the RISC-V parts, but that's your choice. But things in the generic headers do not get polluted by crazy stuff. And sending a big pull request the day before the merge window closes in the hope that I'm too busy to care is not a winning strategy. Clearly, Linus is quite pissed off from all of this. So you get to try again in 6.18 early in that merge window and without garbage, signed off Linus. And just to summarize what Linus is trying to say here is don't put bad or unrelated code in generic kernel files. That's a big no-no. Do not send late pull requests. That's not an excuse. And especially when creating big ones, keep changes outside of risk five and the tree clean and minimal and try again with 6.18, you're on notice. Make sure it's on time and now even early and don't make this make again because this mistake can lead to being suspended from being actively able to contribute to the kernel. 
And Linus, of course, is strict here because he's protecting the, the long-term clarity, stability, and maintainability of the Linus kernel. Readability matters, which Linus showed self-explanatory code that makes sense instead of using obfuscated code that hides important details. Also, the merge window discipline. Sending a big mixed scope pull request late in the merge window is an extremely risky thing. As it leaves little time to review, test, and discuss, that means things can sneak in and not get tested, which is a big no-no in Linus's book. This is a lesson for everyone. Keep your changes in your portion of the code. If you maintain a subsystem, do not modify unrelated generic code unless it's absolutely necessary and agreed upon beforehand. Make code obvious, favor clear explicit code over helper functions, and respect the process and timing of Linux kernel development. Large changes should be sent out early in the merge window, especially if they touch shared code. And we do get to see how Palmer takes all of this in. Does he take it with stride or does he get combative? We've seen in the past maintainers get very combative whenever Linus comes back, what some people might see as a harsh reply, even though it does seem very warranted. Let's see what Palmer has to say about it. All right, in response to Linus's whole entire message here, Palmer says, okay, sorry. I've been dropping the ball lately and it kind of piled up as taking a bunch of stuff late, but that just leads to me making mistakes. So I'll stop being late and hopefully that helps with quality issues. And it seems like Palmer here takes things in stride as his reply here acknowledges fault. He doesn't argue or defend the late submission. He admits to dropping the ball. He also owns the problem. He's recognizing that taking these changes in late causes mistakes and quality issues. He's agreeing to change and commits himself to sending pull requests earlier in future merge windows. He's kept this completely calm. There doesn't seem to be any defensive language. In short, it feels professional and focused towards a solution, which is awesome. A very classy maintainer response here instead of trying to escalate this as we've seen in other cases where maintainers just can't take and accept Linus's feedback. So it's really nice and refreshing to see a great response here, but that's how I'm taking it. Maybe you see this a little different. I'd like to know what you think. And we know Linus's style is intentionally blunt. He's been running this project for 30 plus years and uses very forward language to get his points across. And this is really just Linus's job as he is the final gatekeeper and long-term maintainer who has to make merge decisions, set the technical standards, and protect the long-term maintainability here. But regardless, it's good to see some resolve here, as this could have taken a turn for the worse real quick. And if you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the back and forth that has happened between bcashfs and the maintainer there and Linus Torvalds, as it is seemingly permanently frozen from the mainline kernel. Will it be removed or not? Check out my other video on that. You're gonna enjoy it. Follow along with more Linux news and drama by subscribing below. Smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.